Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name's Sarah and I'm a small business owner from New Zealand. Today I'm going to be sewing what I like to call a Frankenstein dress. I heard this saying a few years ago, I can't remember where, but I loved the saying because it kind of tied in with exactly what I like to do when I'm sewing. So a Frankenstein dress basically refers to a dress that is made up of lots of different elements from different dresses. So um, for example, I have collected a whole lot of different items on Pinterest that I really love um, and I'm going to use different components from each to sort of mesh together to create my Frankenstein dress. So I'm going to pop a picture just here of some of the dresses that I've collected that I really like and I'll talk you through the elements that I'd like to incorporate and then we'll get started. So I really wanted to have big puffy sleeves and a high neck which is elasticated an elastic casing down the bottom and then for the skirt if I've got enough fabric I would love for it to have multiple tears. I'm thinking around three might be nice and then what I really love about um, this Shona Joy I think it is uh, garment is I love the way that it ties to the skirt so I'm going to also try and incorporate that and pockets which I might have to make out of another fabric because I'm not sure if I've got enough of the fabric that I am making it out of today but we'll see how we go. Here are the pieces that you're going to need to create the top for your garment. For this, you'll need a couple of measurements. Your shoulder to waist measurement, your entire bust measurement, your shoulder to armpit measurement, and then also the side of your shoulder to your collarbone. This will form your bodice pieces and also your sleeves. For your sleeves, make sure you measure from your shoulder to where you'd like the sleeve to finish and that will become the length. These pieces will be cut on the fold and I'll show you more about that in a second. For your skirt and the ties, we'll be working with rectangles. So I've popped all of the measurements here. Basically, we'll just be working with the width of the fabric. For this project, ideally, you wanna have something at least 140 wide. If you've got something that's 112, you'll need to adjust the amount of panels you've got. So for example, for panel one, if you've got 112 width fabric, ideally, you probably wanna have two panels for the first one, four for the second, and then eight for the last. Okay, to cut your pieces out, you're gonna to have to do it in two steps. So firstly, fold your fabric so that the salvages are meeting in the middle and there are two folds, one on the left side and one on the right side like the diagram shows. Then you're going to place your pattern pieces for the bodice and the sleeves on the fold, just like I've shown you. And then cut those bad boys out. Now that you've cut your bodice pieces and your sleeves out, I want you to fold the fabric widthways so that the two salvages meet and then there's a fold on the other side. And then you're going to cut all of the panels as follows. For your ties, once you've cut them out, you can cut them in half. So you've got three long ties. You can cut them in half to make six ties all together. And just in case those diagrams didn't make sense, here's a little snapshot of me folding my fabric to get the bodice pieces and the sleeve pieces. Grab one of your bodice pieces and a sleeve and match at the curve. Do this on both sides of the bodice. Then grab your remaining bodice piece and match these curves with the sleeve curves. And then stitch these in place, overlock or zigzag, whatever your preference is.
Next up, you're going to have right sides facing and you're going to pin from the bottom of the bodice to the end of the sleeve as shown. And then you're gonna stitch this in place. Now I'm popping bias binding around the neckline. For this, you can make your own or you can use pre-made stuff. I'm using pre-made binding that I had in the drawer just so that it gets used up, but I've linked a tutorial down below for if you'd like to make your own. I've also linked a couple of detailed tutorials below on how to attach bias binding because I know that this little video clip here isn't super detailed, so be sure to check those out if you need them. When I'm doing the top stitching on the bias binding, I'm making sure that I'm leaving a tiny gap for my elastic to go through to cinch all of my neckline in. Now I'm just giving that neckline a good press of the iron, which is quite a good habit to get into after you've finished seams and stuff like that. It just keeps things nice and tidy and professional looking. So what I'm doing next is I'm just measuring around my upper waist where my top is going to finish. So I'm just getting some elastic and popping it around there. I'm wanting it to be reasonably firm. So think about there plus maybe two centimeters. Pop that around my upper bicep and then pull it nice and firm and then add a couple of centimeters. Cool. Okay, we're at halfway. So finish the top uh, by putting elastic at the bottom of the waist and then elastic in the sleeves and this is how it's looking. I'm still wanting to add ties at the bottom of my top that are going to be able to join to the skirt. Um, and I think I also might add some ties at the bottom of the sleeves too, just so that it all ties in. Um, because in the skirt, I'm wanting to put sort of ties at each of the tiers if I've got enough fabric left over. Um, and then it will all, I've said tie so much, but tie together. <laughs> um, yeah, all right, woohoo, halfway. For each of your different tiers, stitch them at the side seams as shown. For each different tier, you should end up with a big loop so for tier one you'll have a loop that's just made up of one width of the fabric so that'd be about 140 if you've used 140 centimeter wide fabric second tier will be 280 and then the third tier will be a whopping 420 centimeters so so you have three loops all together each of them double the previous tier in size. So I've just finished sewing all of my side seams of the different tiers together and now I'm going to gather the top of each of the different tiers. So I thought I would talk you through one of my gathering hacks that I've used for a little while now that saves a lot of time especially for um, skirts like this that have a lot of meterage. So like for example the second tier has got two widths and if you're using 140 centimeter fabric that means you got 280 centimeters to sew around and then our last tier has got four of that so whew, that's a lot so this hack will help you out so basically what you're gonna do is you pop the press the foot down you pop your stitch length up to the highest that it can go so mine's five and then uh, needle down and then you do a couple of stitches no backstitch, no backstitch. And then what you do is you grab with your finger the cotton on the top and you just create a little bit of tension as you sew and it will gather for you. So um, this hack, yay, there we go, woohoo! This hack works really well if something is two times the size of what you're attaching it to, um, which in this case, every single tear is double the last one. So this should work out perfectly. I 
I made a casing at the top of my skirt by folding the top down by the size of the elastic that I'm using, which mine is three centimeters, and adding one centimeter allowance just to make sure that it has a bit of wiggle room when I'm pulling it through. Now I'm just using a safety pin which is attached to my elastic to feed it through. And then I'm just zigzagging the two ends to keep them nice and secure. And then closing off that casing. We are super close to finishing now team, so if you've come this far, well done. I am now hemming the skirt, so I'm doing this by folding as I go, but if you're a learner, I recommend taking your skirt to the iron, pressing it up one centimeter, and then pressing again another centimeter, and then stitching in place. Um, yeah, I just hem so many garments that I can kind of just free ball it like I am here. <laughs> Now I'm stitching the ties. I've created these by making, I guess what you could say, a straight cut bias binding. So basically I folded them in half and folded the two outsides in towards the middle and then I'm just stitching along the edge there. So altogether you should have six ties. I'm putting two of mine on my skirt. I'm lining up with the two side seams and just stitching internally as you can see. Same thing with the top. I'm going to line them up with the two side seams and then stitch them internally as well. And then I have just done some little facade ties on the second tier of my skirt, which you'll be able to see in the final part. But I basically just folded them in half and stitched down the middle and then tied them into bows. And here's how she looks. I'm so happy with how it turned out and I really feel that I managed to incorporate each of the different concepts that I was after from my inspiration pick, which I've attached to the left. I didn't end up doing pockets in the end. Oh, I forgot, but Hey, next time. <laughs> Rookie YouTuber. I forgot to film an outro, so here I am a day after making it. I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching my video, and I really hope you enjoyed it. Please make sure if you make this garment, tag me on Instagram, at MyKeeperNZ. I would love to see your makes. And also, please make sure if you enjoyed this video that you like and subscribe, and don't forget to turn the notification bell on as well so that you see when I upload next. Thanks team, see you next time.